G'day guys, now if any of you guys have been keeping track of my earlier projects, you would have seen this. I have not had the best track record with concrete stuff. And you can see below me, leftovers of this table here, which has not survived particularly well and is gonna need to be redone. Now, a normal person would give up when they're holding pieces of their concrete tabletop, but I'm not that smart. So I thought, why not make something twice as big, twice as heavy, and something that goes inside the house. So keep tuned if you guys wanna see if I'm gonna fail spectacularly with this or if it will turn out awesomely. Because at the moment, I'm not quite sure because I haven't done it yet. So keep tuned and we'll see how I go. Now, one thing I learned with this table is that, well, well, this table behind me was a fiberglass reinforced concrete and I thought that'd be strong enough, but I've either got the mix wrong or something like that, but it clearly wasn't strong enough because it broke way too easily and I need to put some sort of steel core inside of it to make it a hell of a lot stronger. So I'm going to do that on this project and see how well it can actually come up because it's going to be inside, it's going to look pretty, it's got to pass the wife test which is the hardest one of them all and personally I want something that I can look at and go oh yeah I made that. So what I've got here is what I built is my massive vibrating table which is what I'm sitting on and what I'm building it all in which was basically a bench angle grinder that I put on top of a piece of metal mine and it basically shakes the whole thing back and forth and allows me to vibrate the concrete to get all the bubbles and everything out of it. And it's relatively simple. I've got a video if you guys are curious, but there's not too much to it. But what I've got here is, and what I'm making is, I wanted to have a nice curve to the edge of the table. So I got a bit of, bit of PVC and got some expanding foam and a bit of wax paper in between it, which I can't see in this one, but I did it in the later one that I didn't properly show. And it just helped it all dry and get the nice curve that I wanted. Because otherwise it'd be a very square and if I tried doing it freehand, then it would just look absolutely terrible. So I just basically sanded this down until it was nice and smooth and got the curve that I wanted and it just turned out really good and I'd recommend anybody doing it this way. And just so the concrete wouldn't mix through the foam and just create a nice goofy mess. Now the sides of that I've got here are pretty much just hot glued down with some supporting little pieces that were put in place and it worked really, really well. You don't need to worry about nailing anything for the melamine. Hot glue is fantastic for this, it doesn't need much more. And for the, all the edges, I put through a nice layer of silicon, let it dry and that was all it was. And then just a layer of um, wax release, mold, mold release stuff which just helps it all come off. I need a bit of help when it comes to the concrete mix that's going into it. So I have adjusted my formula, hopefully for something that's a lot stronger and a lot better for what I need. So the first bit is gonna be one equal parts concrete and sand. The sand that I'm using is gonna be a dolomite sand because it's a very dark sand and it gives it a very nice marble texture which should give it a darker texture once it's all finished. To that, I'm going to add some fiberglass. because So the fiberglass helps bond all of it together and stops it from cracking and those sort of fun things. It also adds a hell of a lot of strength to the concrete. So to that, I'm going to add something called Bondcrete. They're, that's the best stuff that I could find and it's supposed to hold together really well and create a very strong mixture. And then to that, I'm going to add one part, one in ten parts of Builder's sand, uh, Builder's Lime, which is a hydrated lime, which should add a hell of a lot more strength as well. So it's got smaller particles, which should help bind it and bond it all together a lot stronger. And I've measured out the amount of blackening that I'm gonna put inside of it, the black oxide, because I wanna keep it a very strong, solid mix. And then it's pretty much just a matter of laying it all down. There's not too much to it. You put it in there and let it go. Now you'll be able to see my little vibrating table in action here and see how it's all coming. If you look carefully, you can see the little bubbles popping to the top, which is just all the air bubbles coming out of it, which is what you really want. 
and a little bit of rebar for strength, which is you really do need. Now, to try and keep a little bit of the weight down, because I didn't want this thing to be stupid heavy, I put a center core of vermiculite, which is a really, really light rock, um, expanded rock, which works really, really well, and it sets really, really hard. So, I imagine this, when I actually worked it out, using the vermiculite for just the core, saved probably about 70 kilos on this thing, which adds up quite quickly and quite well. And it's still a relatively strong mix with this inside of it. The only thing I'd recommend is keep it slightly further away from the edge, because I had a little bit of it showing through at the end of the day, but I think it gives a nice little bit of character. Now the plan was always to have a nice little waterfall edge, but I have to so I have to do this in two parts, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do a very nice job. So I basically flipped it up, made sure it was very, very square, and then laid the other half down, which worked really, really well, but it's just a matter of repeating, doing exactly the same as I did in the first half, and then following through. And again, you can see the nice vibrating cable going off. Now, with the weight of this thing, I was kind of paranoid that it would be way too heavy. So, I got out my TIG welder, I got out a little bit of steel, and I made a nice supporting bar that went straight through the top part of it, and went all the way to the ground. Now, this is going to be covered by some stuff, by a nice panel a little bit later, but it's here to give a lot more strength, and make sure it's a lot more rigid, and so I don't have to worry about it falling if I stand on it, or something silly like that. And you can see it's all in place. And like I say, more vermiculite and then a nice layer on top of that to make it all smooth and make it all just nice and pretty. Now, I worked this thing out to be about 250 kilos, so trust me when I say this thing is freaking heavy. And yeah, I'm rocking it back and forth on the weight, so I'm not trying to pick up 250 kilos here by myself. But I'm going to spare you guys the clips when I was trying to negotiate it off here and just basically get it on its side. Because it was not a fun job and I'd really recommend getting help, but I'm kind of stubborn and I don't like asking for help, so I ended up doing most of it by myself. But I'd seriously recommend getting help, asking a mate and doing that sort of stuff. Now, on this bit, I wanted to expose all the current aggregate on it. I wanted to see all the sand, all the rocks, and all that sort of fun stuff inside of it. So I've got a diamond cutting wheel, which makes a hell of a lot of dust, and I basically went over every single edge and smoothed them all down until it was a nice... So you could just get rid of the top aggregate on top of it. And then after that, I have to do a little bit more. And a lot of dust, a hell of a lot of dust. Now, those pads on top of it there are a concrete sanding disc. 
or a stone sanding disc and mostly what they do is it's a polishing pad and it takes down very fine layers and makes a very very smooth fine finish. So it's got a whole lot of series of grits that you go between, you start off at 80, you work your way up to 1500 and at the end of the day you're going to have a very very smooth fine surface. But when I started to go through a few layers I started finding lots of little holes like that in it and I needed to sort them out. Now I trialled a few different methods to see the best way to do it, but I found the best way was to get a very, th a very thin slurry of concrete, break it all down into a very smooth layer, and then pour the whole thing directly on top of it, and then basically start massaging it through. I find that any water inside of it started getting sucked straight into the concrete mixture below it, and as I kept on rubbing it in, it kept on rubbing the concrete mixture directly into any holes and just kept on rubbing and rubbing and rubbing until it got really really dry, I started scraping it over and it worked remarkably well. I couldn't find anything that said to do it this way online but trust me this works like a charm and it sticks, it's hard and it's really really quick before it dries and you're ready to do everything else with it. And after all that polishing, I guarantee this is about as smooth as any sort of marble that you can buy in the shop. I was actually amazed about how smooth and fine I could get the top of this because it's just awesome. And then it time to, comes time for sealing. Now I thought about going a couple different routes, but I ended up just getting the very standard concrete sealing paint or concrete sealant that you could use on top of it and spraying it on top and there's not really that much to it. I put about three coats on top of it and let them dry and it just came up with quite a nice finish. I needed to buff and polish it after that but it was just an amazing finish and I'm quite happy with it and it's been quite durable as well so I would do it again. And this is a cutting, cutting compound which it basically takes off a very very fine layer of the paint sealant stuff on top of it and makes it a very very smooth flat surface and it just brings out the wow factor in the finish that you get on top of it. Now, I said before, I'll say it again, this thing was really heavy. So I got some really heavy duty wheels and wheels at the front and I basically made up a little trolley that the whole thing could sit on and I could move it back and forth. And this basically allowed me to move it around. It was a bit of an effort getting it on there, but once I had it on, it wasn't too bad and I could wheel it inside of the house, wheel it into position and go from there. Now, this is the island bench that I had in there originally. And it was never really quite good for surface. You couldn't sit inside of the chair without banging your leg against the side of it. So I ripped it all up and we're retiling it anyway. So I ripped up all the tiles and now I'm making up the base that's going to go to it. So I couldn't move it with this piece on top of it. So I needed to do once it was in place. Now I'm just making up a little frame to make it so I can really securely attach it to the ground because I don't want it wobbling back and forth and I want to make sure that it is not going to move at all because it's one heavy side of thing so I don't want to have to worry about any of that sort of fun stuff.
Now, securing the whole thing to the ground, I couldn't think of anything better than good old liquid nails. So, I put way too much here. I didn't get a very good clip of it because my little nozzle broke on me, but I put a hell of a lot of it in there and basically lathered it up as much as humanly possible. And then, again, underneath my little support panels there, I just put way too much of the stuff in there and then screwed it all to the ground and put way too many screws. So, hopefully this thing is never going to move and it's going to be very, very stable. And then it came time for tiling. Now, I'm not an expert tiler, but I've gotten all right at doing it over the time. And I've got my very pretty wife giving me a hand with it. And it's just basically tiling. Make sure all the ground's flat, make sure all there's no lumps or anything, and make sure you get everything going. Follow the little T, the little square thing you put inside of it to make sure it's all smooth. And that's about it. Now, you can't see here, but this is the time that the blood gods came against on this project. I was out cutting another tile and my old table that I had at the back fell. I fell on top of it and then landed on a tile and the blood tax came. I ended up cutting my hand open quite badly and I had a little bit of a hissy fit about it. Now, I always envisioned a panel that goes in between both of the things because I didn't really want to be looking at the bare steel that goes in between the concrete layers and I think this would just give a very nice polished finish. So I basically got some MDF panels and made up a nice little panel that goes between it. There's nothing overly complicated on here, it's just basically lining them up, make sure it's all square and then hot gluing the two of them together and then finishing it off and making them nice and round and then paint. Now, I really did a really dodgy thing here and I tried to record me spraying the undercoat. So this is a high build primer that's on top of it and I forgot to take the video of me filming it. But here is the top coat that's going on top of it. It's a two pack paint. So it basically sets like plastic and gets a really nice smooth finish. I got a couple runs so I needed to sand them down and I buffed it all out and polished it up after that. But the finish on this thing was just amazing and it just makes the whole thing pop. I just love the finish you get off this sort of paint, it just cannot be beat by anything else. But it is dangerous as all hell, so don't use it if you're not quite sure what you're doing and you haven't read the stuff, so make sure you read any, thought of, any sort of safety requirements. But that finish pretty much speaks for itself. Now at least we'll hold it all in place and make sure that it didn't crack any of this sort of paint when I was moving around, and then it's time to move the whole thing into place. Now I've got some under, I put some lighting strips underneath the tiles and had underbench lighting. I won't go into that sort of stuff in this one, it's electrical stuff and fiddly, but it just makes it come out a whole lot better. Now for here, siliconing, I didn't really like the, I only had white colour paint and I couldn't find any, white colour silicon, and I couldn't find any that I like. So this is my little technique, I basically put silicon in between it which helps glue the whole panel into place. And then I got some grout which I put inside of the edge and coat all over the silicon and it just makes it match exactly the grout that's on the normal tiles and it just looks fantastic. So basically while it's still all wet I just rub a little bit of silicon into all the, I rub a bit of grout into all the silicon and pull off all my tape so you get the nice square clean edges and then just a little bit of water over it and let the whole thing dry and you just get a really nice finish. I'm not sure if this is a proper way and the experts are probably going to grumble but I loved how it turned out and it just looks awesome.
Now, I thought that I should cover some of the concerns that I've had with it, because I'm sure some of you guys have got the same one. The first one is the weight. Now, I was a little bit paranoid, because I calculated this guy out to be about 250 kilos, and it's sitting on floorboards. But I had a look underneath the, underneath the floor itself, and there is a big concrete beam that goes underneath this bench itself, so it's relatively well supported, but I will keep a very close eye on it and see if the floor starts to sink at all. But hopefully it won't, but if it does, then I will fix that sort of stuff. And you might notice that behind me, it doesn't quite match up with the benches behind it, but the plan is this bench is gonna be the same as the rest of the benches behind me. I'm gonna do another waterfall edge bench that goes off the side of here, and there's gonna be a sink that's gonna be covered in concrete as well, so it's gonna be a full sink built out of concrete, and even the stovetop itself is gonna have a completely flush surface with this concrete around it, and it should look incredible. And the benches behind, and the doors behind us are all gonna be the same color as the centerpiece that I've got in here. So it should look really good once it's all finished and once it's all completed, but it just takes time and time. <laughs> so I will get to it and I will make videos of the rest of this coming together, but it's just gonna take me a little bit of time to get to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys watched this thing coming together and like me are quite happy that it's not falling apart, which I am thrilled about. So if you guys got any questions, please ask me in the comments. And if this is, a, this is the first video of mine, then please subscribe down below in the little box. And if you want to see the new stuff that I've got coming up, then make sure you click on the little bell icon and you'll get a little instant notification whenever I upload something. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.